This is a saying, an important saying, from uh, William de Kooning, who was uh, born in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, but is a world famous artist now in the United States. The Netherlands was too small for his talent. Um, and the Art uh, Academy in Rotterdam has this saying on its outside. And that has a very nice double meaning because it's an old banking building now being a cultural art school. So the building has not changed, but the content of the building has substantially changed from banking to art. And from him is the saying, I have to change to stay the same. In other words, to stay an audit office and to be an effective audit office, you have to change with the times. And there are only two ways at looking at change. If your surrounding is changing and you are not changing with it, they will change you. And that is not a very pleasant feeling. You rather be uh, the owner of the change. That means that you have to listen very well to your surrounding, analyze it, and then decide to change yourself. Because if you don't do that, they will change you. And again, that's not very pleasant. Uh, and that's why I have William de Kooning's um, words in my heart. Um, the first very big change in the Netherlands for the audit office was the operation accountancy system. Now, of course, historians will say this is not the first because we go back to 1474. Well, that is a very, 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 very long time. And you can understand, hadn't we changed with the time since 14 uh, and so much, we wouldn't be here today. So this is absolutely not the first change. But from the recent history that I can oversee, yes? You want to have this? Okay. From the recent history that I can oversee, that's the first change since the Second World War. Um, we do exist now 200 years if we come back to Napoleon. Uh, and this is the more recent history. This first operation from the 18th to the 19th is interesting for our colleagues from uh, uh, Iraq. I will. Uh, chain, uh, explained it a little bit more in detail. Then the, the European orientation came uh, early this uh, era, and now we are in a total different ball game, which is the third change, which I will explain more at length too. First, please. In '85, um, the Netherlands, in terms of accountability, was like a developing country. Uh, there was absolutely no interest in having accounts, in making accounts, in publishing accounts. Um, I'm, I'm being very friendly to say that we lagged five years behind, because most of the ministries were seven to eight years behind. And if a ministry is behind, you need only one ministry to be behind. You cannot make the country bill. And if the country bill cannot be composed, you cannot submit it to the audit office. And if the uh, country bill is not in the audit office, they cannot audit it. So I think we, when I entered the audit office, they were about uh, researching uh, something like 78, the year 78, but it was not yet complete. And what a lot of auditors in our office did at the time is helping the ministries to put together the bills, which doesn't mean, of which does mean, of course, that afterwards you're not independent anymore to audit the bills. But anyway, those bills were put together, then they were brought to the Ministry of Finance, then our auditors helped the Ministry of Finance to put the bills together to bring them to the audit office, and lo and behold, there they sat and audited those bills. Uh, not very professional. By the time they sent it to Parliament, um, they had a very nice word for it, the cylindric archive, which meant the paper bin. It came there and it went into the cylindric archive. 
it didn't stir anything. Only um, very bad news for the environment people, all those paper. But the environment people were not awake by that time. So we sat down in the office and said to each other, ah, th this is not the way we should work. Now for all audit offices, the message not to work, not to perform, is good news for the ministries. So you don't get any outside um, uh, impulses, triggers, to be a good performer. Because if, as an audit office, you are a good performer, you are bad news for most ministers. And that's not what they want. So they could stay that way in the audit office, being pleasant to everybody, and nobody was saying, hey, where is your opinion? And when the opinion came, they said, well, this is old news. So this went on for, I think, 20 years. I don't know. But then we sat together, because at that time, there was a financial crisis. Uh, because what we live in today is by far not the first. Uh, I don't know what it triggered, but the economy went down and they were in need of money. And as the bills were not there, they didn't know where to find the money, where they find the money. They didn't know whether the money was really around or not. Because if your bills are not complete, you kind of swim around. So uh, we made a report to the parliament saying that they didn't know uh, anything about the bills. And as they were not knowledgeable about the bills, um, they could not make sensible decisions. And there was a cry out in Parliament, um, but a third party who was really interested in it was the then Minister of Finance. So um, we worked together uh, for sound financial management. The Parliament, the Audit Office, in the Ministry of Finance. And as in the IDI, uh, uh, what do you call it? Financial management? Mm, P? Public financial management. Well, we didn't know that lesson at that time, but for us, the public financial management key, working together the Parliament, the Audit Office, and the Ministry of Finance, was key to make this um, uh, project, and the project was called, uh, yes, yes, the operating, Operation Accounting Reform. And we had a common goal. It was a five-year project because everybody thought, well, a little bit of bookkeeping, what, what, what the hell, that, that should not be diffi difficult, and what the hell, that was damn difficult. So, it turned out that it was not the bookkeeping, it was the systems underlying the bookkeeping that were the problem. Um, so the whole management system, uh, there was a lack of it. There was no internal audit. There was no feeling that the system should deliver good management information, that management was also uh, a priority in political terms, uh, that it could help the politicians to make better decisions. That feeling was not there. So for five years, the project went on. Uh, and after five years, we need another three, four years to finally have the bill as we have them now. Uh, the year end uh, in the Netherlands, that's the, uh, December 31st, uh, they have to submit all the ministries their bills to the Minister of Finance mid-February uh, and then mid-February to mid-March the Minister of Finance can uh, put it together and by the end of March it has to be sent to us and by the middle of May we submit our opinion which we have of course worked on already during the year as most of our audit focuses on the systems and we check the outcome but the systems are more important than the outcome, as they carry the outcome, and the systems you can do the whole year through. Um, and now we are 
when we started, we knew less than 5% of the bill was regular. All the rest was unknown regularity. And now we have 99.9% .9 regularity, which the ministries complain about because we are too strict, they feel. And we should now be more lenient as they have this 99% of uh, regularity. They want to have lesser strict tolerances, lesser strict audit office. They um, try to get out of internal audit, uh, well, etc. They're kind of trying to get out of our straitjacket. Uh, and I'm not sure they will get out of our straitjacket. But that's not, that's their problem, not mine. Okay. Um, at the end of uh, that period, say mid-90s, um, when we migrated to having the figures uh, all right and the ministries migrated to having their systems all right, the focus was more on two things for the Netherlands on the outcome, because you put money in, you get regularity out, but do you get effectiveness out? Do you get results out? So they started to swift from financial outcome to um, result outcome, outcome budgeting, like um, less people dead on the road, um, more children to school, more healthy such and so. Uh, and it turned out to be very difficult. So they're, straight, they're slightly leaving now this process because the difficulty was not so much to get figures over a period of time, but to get them year by year by year by year. Because if you go to output budgeting in terms of results, you have also outcome bills in terms of year by year. Uh, and they felt that um, if they invested and the result was three years later, uh, it didn't coincide very well with the political debate. Because then the opposition would say, only 5%, you have invested so much money. and." Where are these results? And they said, yes, 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 but this is an investment and the result will only come in three years' time. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That's your story, but we don't believe it. And then they would cut in the money. And then, of course, uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy was there that the outcome was not what they expected because they had cut in the middle of the investment. So there is... <coughs> very much tension about that part of uh, the change for outcome budgeting. Um, we still feel you should have a good outcome debate, so there should be evaluation, there should be outcome audit, but, but we feel with the people that have this tension that maybe not year by year you should have outcome and effectiveness. The second debate about outcome budgeting is that the government says we are not the only one responsible for the outcome. We have a strategy, a plan for the outcome in society, and then society itself is part of the execution. So why look at us for the effectiveness? We're not the only one that has the ownership of the effectiveness. So they kind of shy away of their responsibility for the effectiveness of spending uh, the money. And I come to that uh, later on one point. The second element in this 2000 era is, oops, there I go. Yeah, no, that's the other way around. Hmm. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Um, is Europe. Um, <coughs> you must understand, we are not a federation in Europe. Uh, there are people that try to behave like a federation. There are countries that have nothing to do with a federation. 
On the other hand, in Brussels there is a pot of money that we all give a lot of money to. Of course, they have a budget too, and they should have a bill. And there is the European Court of Auditors that oversees and audits the bill of Europe. Since more than 15 years, there has not been a positive opinion of the European Court of Auditors on the Bill of Europe. So in the Netherlands, 15 years ago, we said, who gives money to a foundation that has not a good opinion from their auditors? And at the same time, we give this money to Brussels. What's going on in our head that we believe in a system that has no positive opinion and we still are willing to pay for it? So that's one of the reasons the trust in Europe goes down and down and down and down because now the people in the Netherlands are accustomed to the regularity of their own bill of the government and still this government throws money to Europe and no regularity comes out. So to support the European project, we started with the European trend report. And each year, uh, and we have some followers now in the other European countries, we write down what is the financial management in